The concerning reality is that the majority of those people have never even had an eye examination. Sometimes a pair of glasses is all that stands between them, clear vision and opportunity. But there's more to it than that. A thorough examination can detect eye diseases and early treatment can prevent blindness. Nick Bennett with you on The Daily Drive and your chance to pick up $10,000 in the month of September. All you've got to do is call us on 13 12 83, have a chat to one of our experts or maybe give us some expert advice yourself. 13 12 83, you're in the draw immediately to pick up $10,000. It's easy as that. We've had a wrap at Beats for Breast Cancer. What a wonderful show. So glad we could share it with you. Thank you to the artists who gave their time and our very generous sponsors. Hope to see you next year. Fantastic stuff. Great to see those phones in the air. Yeah. Love it. Hey, I'm so excited to have Jackie back for a start. I know that you were grooving big time there to Leo Sayer. Where did you first see Leo Sayer? Do you remember? Oh, I remember I was a teenager, I think. That's giving it away, isn't it? But I remember those songs. Oh. I, could, I knew the words to those. Yeah. Still as fresh as the day. Now, now, Ron, this guy's name is Ron Cross. Welcome. Nick, I was in nappies when I first seen Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Ron. <laughs> Did they have nappies then? An investment worth considering is the Trilogy Monthly Income Trust. It has a strong track record of delivering consistent returns since its inception in 2007. Over the five years to the 31st of March 2015, its investors earned an average of 8.2% per annum. With results like these, it's hardly a surprise people think Trilogy Funds provides its investors with high rates of return. It's Nick Bennett, what have you got for us this year? Big Stash Karen CDs make a fantastic ready-made gift. A great one for Christmas stocking is Robbie Williams' brand new studio album, The Heavy Entertainment Show. In 2005, he put out the incredibly popular, platinum-selling, self-financed, independent release called Autumn Flow. Thankfully, a fourth album has arrived. It came out last week. So popular that it sold out here last night. Would you please welcome Lior? Maybe 30 years to two years ago, the ABC's Paper Giants, and you're sitting in your TV room or wherever you like to lounge and watch the box. What were you thinking when you saw this story of your life? before your eyes. News for the music industry. Massive, I think. Look, the cab drivers are talking about it. Ah. Those that were born in the <laughs> 60s and 70s who loved Cold Chisel and grew up with it. It's really big news. This is a rarity. The last time the band got together was for a charity tsunami event four years ago in Melbourne. Before that, it was six years ago in the round, and that was a massive sellout. Thank you, Ali Brunning. You got the gloves on this morning. It's a wee bit chilly up here, isn't it? It sure is. I we thought you meant the gloves on as in ready uh, to fight. <laughs> oh, well, that too. Someone said yesterday the wind chill was down to minus one, but I don't need to remind anybody just how cold it is if you're in the camping grounds. Congratulations if you've survived three nights in those camping grounds because you've been battered by everything that Bass Straits had to offer. G'day. When musical genius manifests, it's easy to be dazzled by the sheer brilliance of song. A singer can transfix you by the emotion the performance evokes. When you dig deeper and find out what makes the muso tick, it can be a very special, sometimes tragic, funny story. Ray is just like that. I may as well enjoy it here on the brown couch in the green room at the 2010 ARIA Hall of Fame. The Priestess! Thank you so much for putting your heart and soul into sound relief. God bless, good night. Nick here with a very tough assignment. I'm retracing some of the steps of some great films shot here in South Australia on the SA Tourism Commission's movie map. And of course, we can't go without showing you that famous fence. They came, uh, came up along the fence to this point here and this, this is where uh, Daisy decided that she was going to head to Waluna to catch up with her mother who was coming in on the, on the train. And uh, so she, she heads, heads off in that direction towards Waluna. And the uh, Molly and uh, sorry, it was the yeah, Gracie that went. They went. Molly and Daisy continued along the along the fence. Now this, according to the movie, pretty much leads all the way to Western Australia, doesn't it? Well, actually, right through the uh, through the north of Western Australia. That's, yeah, that's right. Do you want to have a go at it? I'm certainly. Yeah, I'd know. It looks like it could be Western it Australia. Might be a cut lunch. <laughs> Hi, Nick Bennett in New York. At the age of two, Monica was finding her voice in a gospel choir. By the age of 12, she'd been discovered by a talent scout. And by the age of 14, she'd become the youngest artist ever to have two number one songs in the R&B charts back to back. 
G'day, it's Nick Bennett here, a million miles from Planet Pop in northeast Arnhem Land. Home to Yoffa Yindi. Behind Bauxite, Nolan Boy's biggest export. Where do you see your role now in Yoffa Yindi? Do you think you might step back a little from the touring? It's takes you away from home a lot. That's what, that's what I, uh, I think, uh, you're more sort of recording than touring. You know, they may have broken in a brand new auditorium in Tamworth this year to cope with the popularity of the Golden Guitar Awards, but they've got some serious competition from Opryland USA. Here, they have five ballrooms, over 40,000 square metres, room enough to kick your heels up to some of the world's best country acts. The James Bond epics have become a bit of a family affair over the years, and the regular support cast of M, Miss Money Penny, and Techno Wiz Q all return to The World Is Not Enough. The sets on The World Is Not Enough are amazing. This cell is actually made from foam and plaster, and forms the backdrop for a high energy rescue mission from a tower in the middle of Turkey's Bosphorus Sea. Without doubt, every good Aussie kid had some Lego in his collection. Look, I've regressed to Duplo, but things are a lot different now. It's gone high tech. It's all about chips meeting bricks. I mean, that obviously is not a glamorous uh, shot. I mean, no, you are you know glamorous, what? but it's... This looks like Chucky, don't you think? It does a little. <laughs> yeah, but it's real, you know? It says that people who have photographs taken have makeup put on. And it's not a con, you know, there's so much... Well, that's wax, you realise. Is that right? <gasps> oh, my God, you didn't realise it was wax? I didn't. That's, that's why no. it looks... Look, I've got... I, thought, I cleaned oh, my wow. teeth. Look I at thought that. you did better than that. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Let's get it straight. First four photos are wax. Why do you think there's been such a huge fascination about your sexuality then? Backstage here at the 13th annual ARIA Music Awards. Let's start here, shall we, by following this unique trail of roadies droppings that have been left behind that should lead us somewhere fabulous. Bernard from Powderfinger, how do you keep yourself pumped? It's a long day, isn't it? Um, I just had a can of lift. What about your sleeping habits, your resting habits in your habitat there? About 23 hours a day. And then I wake up and I eat and then I go right back to sleep. A great meat-eating musical mammal, Harry Connick Jr., thank you. Cool. Roar. Arr. 